What up guys, what up, what up? I am Lou. Hey, the sponsor of today's video is GoShareIt. Go check them out at GoShareIt.io. It's a sharing platform that allows you to share large and small files, where it makes it very easy to share. Your recipient, all they need is a download link and they're good to go. All right guys, so we're gonna be working on this project. It's gonna be a multi-part video. So I don't know how many parts yet, probably gonna be four or five parts somewhere some somewhere around there anyways but ultimately um we're gonna be building we're gonna start off by writing a script putting a script together that's gonna be able to search a folder and all the files in that folder for a specific text so let's say you have a folder with a thousand files in it and maybe they're all mixed uh, CSV, JSON, um, Excel. I mean, they could be all mixed up or right? XML. doesn't matter. Just different files. And maybe you're looking for a specific, um, value, right? You're looking for a specific address. Uh, you're looking for some sort of specific, um, identifier. And the script is going to pretty much scan through all the files and tell you which file um, so if it's an Excel file, which sheet, and then it tells you which, uh, row and you know what the value is, right? If it's a, uh, text file, um, it's going to tell you the name of the file, the, the row where it found the value. And then of course they're going to print out the actual value, you know, because maybe if you're searching for an address, for example, uh, there may be other details associated like a suite number or whatever. So going to just kind of print out information. This again, is one of those deals where it comes in handy when you need it. You know, you, you may not use it often, but when you do need it, it comes in very handy. So that was the whole purpose of me even building this script. Like I actually had a use case for it in some, some cases. Now you can use a, a command line by all means, and that works to some extent, like it doesn't work for Excel. So that's where I decided I want to build something that is going to work for all files. Now for right now, it's going to work for Excel, old version, Excel dot XLS and the newer version dot XLS. Did I say right? Dot XL SX, um, version. And then of course, text files, any kind of text files, um, JSON, XML, CSV, whatever, right? It doesn't matter. Uh, EDI, the list goes on and on. Um, what I haven't included yet in here, but this is where we're going to have multi-part, is be able to um, read through binary files. Um, again, you know, PDF files, uh, Word documents, things of that nature, right? So I want to include that logic in there as well. But for right now, we're just starting with those to write Excel and text files. And again, it's a multi-part series because right now we're just building a script to do it. We're going to add on to that. We're going to actually build a UI. It's going to be a des desktop app. The reason why it's not a web app because you know, again, we want to search the directories and there's more restrictions doing it that way with a desktop app. You know, you, you run the app locally. So of course they have access to your directory or your network. So it's going to be a desktop app. The overall project, the, the end result would be probably we're going to use the QT framework. We're going, to, we're going to build a desktop app. We're going to build it where we could run this on Mac, Linux, and Windows. Um, it's going to have a UI where you could put it in a field, the value that you're searching for, specify directory. We're going to have, we're going to add features to it where we maybe we want to crawl through subfolders. Like they're going to be all kinds of stuff. We're going to add on to it, but that's why it's going to be like a four or five part video, right? Right now it's going to be the script. Let's get started guys. So I have a folder that I created already and settings. All right, there it goes. So, so here's my folder. It's called, called it a uh, Python text finder. That's what it's called. There's nothing in here brand new. So let's go ahead and open this up on VS code. So let's go see YouTube. Boom. All right, cool. 
All right, so next I'm going to create a file. Um, and I'm going to call this text finder py, right? So let me make this a bit bigger. There you go. That should be good enough. So it's called text finder dot py. Um, okay. So there's two packages that we're going to need to install, right? So one of the packages is going to be, cause we're going to be reading Excel files. So that in order to read old and new versions of Excel, we're going to use open py Excel. So again, I guess before we even do that, um, let me go into my project Python text finder. Let me create a virtual environment. Again, you gotta get this set up, man. This is a must. It's a must. Cool. So let me come back over here. Um, I do. Boom. Cool. I added it. All right. So now let me go back. So now that I have created my virtual environment, let me go ahead and uh, activate it. Again, I'm working on Windows. So it's going to be uh, scripts activate. If you're working on Mac or Linux, it's going to be bin activate. So once I activate it, let's go ahead and get our packages installed that we're going to use. So again, we're using two. One is going to be uh, pip install open pyxl. So let's get that installed. The second one is going to be pip install binary um, or not. So binary or not. So we're going to install that package. Pretty much what this does, it helps identify if a file is a binary file or not. Right. So in this case, binary or text. And this is key because, you know, it's going to help us identify, have a process for text files because it won't be the same for binary files. Um, so nevertheless, that's the purpose behind that. So now that I have both of those uh, packages installed, let's get started, guys. Let's start coding it up. So a few things that I'm going to bring in is going to be my import OS and system. Um, regular expressions. If you're not familiar with regular expressions, dude, they're very powerful to, to utilize. They come in very handy, very ideal to do like text searches and keyword searches and all kinds of things of that le level. Again, there's so much you could do with it, man. Very, you gotta be, you know, get, you could get very creative, but it's something I would strongly recommend to at least understand the, the, um, basics and fundamentals. I may make a video of it kind of going over some of the key features. But it, it's um, strongly recommended, man. I really do. Um, from pass lib import pure pass. Again, we're dealing with pass directories, opening files, pure pass you want to use because this would uh, ensure that it works on Linux, Mac, and Windows. You know, doesn't matter. So now we're going to bring in our open PYXL and load workbook. Um, we're going to import open PYXL. Um, and then we're going to bring in our from binary or not, uh, check import is binary. All right, cool. So we're going to, we're going to be bringing in, um, we're going to build it where when we run our script in the interpreter, we're going to provide two arguments. We're going to provide the folder that we want to, to search files for and from, and then of course the value that we're trying to find. So let's go get those set up. So this will be root directory systems argument. Number one, again, remember zero, it's your Python file. You know, so that's already always been, um, it's already taken up, right? Cause when you run like Python and you specify your Python file, that is argument zero, right? Cause again, it starts from zero and then it goes up. Um, the next thing going to be text, uh, to find. 
So pretty much this is the text that we're trying to search in all of the files. Um, this will be argument two. So now we're going to create a class called text finder. Okay. And then we're going to bring in our, our init. So our initiation, um, this is going to have a few arguments. So for example, one is going to be, um, root directory second one is going to be text value okay so let's go ahead and get those set up so we will set we're going to create uh, we're going to set find to text value so find is pretty much what we're trying to find um, let me change it. Let me call this, um, text, uh, text you find, um, you know what? I just call this text value. It's fine. The next thing is going to be a directory pass. And this will be our root directory. Uh, the next thing is going to be is found. So pretty much what this is saying by default is going to be set to no, but this is going to be like the indicator that tells us if we're trying to search a value and let's say it scans through a thousand files. When it's all said and done, we could just bring, call that, um, this object and it will tell us did it find that value in all the files or not. So it will be yes or no. By default, it will be set to no. Then, of course, if it finds it, it will switch it to yes. And you know, we'll we'll walk through that. And the last object is going to be um, results. So results going to be a list as we find results. Because again, we could find it on multiple files. You know, let's say we have a photo with a thousand files, and we're trying to search uh, the city Dallas. And maybe it, these files relate to customer sales and it has customer information. Well, it would tell us, you know, how many times that, you know, which files of that name appear. So ultimately those results that we find, we're going to load it to a list and then we're going to create a, a, a method to be able to uh, access that, that list. And then from there you could do whatever you want with it, right? From there you could iterate, save it out to a text file, just view it visually, you know, whatever it is that you're trying to do. Um, all right. So cool. So now that I have this set up, there's a the few things that I'm going to create as well. Um, so let's see before we do that, before we go, go on, on our init, I'm going to create a few other methods. So the first one I'm going to create is going to be called search. Excel files. And it's going to take in two arguments. So in this case, it would be a directory file pass and file name. All right. So in this section, this is where we're going to be calling that that package, the open py package. And we're going to load the file pretty much, you know, load the Excel file and do all, do all of that stuff. That's pretty much what we're doing here. Um, so first thing will be work W B is for workbook. Let's go ahead and, and load it. And this will be directory file pass. The next thing is going to be, um, um we're going to iterate through the sheets of the workbook. Cause again, you could have an Excel file that may have 10 sheets and we want to, we want to search all 10 sheets for the specific text that we're trying to find. So we're going to do four, um, worksheet in workbook, um, work sheets. So not sheets name sheets name is literally the text value of the sheet. 
worksheets is the object, the actual object of each worksheet. Then from there, you kind of iterate over the data set. Just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, so once we do that, once we have a worksheet object, now we want to iterate all the rows in that worksheet. So we're going to do another for statement. So in this case, we're going to do for index row in enumerate and worksheet um, dot rows. Okay. So again, now we're we're gonna we're pretty much um getting the list of all the rows in that sheet and we're going to start iterating over that the final for statement is going to be for cell because again now that we're iterating through each row when we want to now iterate through each cell in one row right so that's kind of what we're doing here um which is row um once we do this we're going to be checking is instance um cell what we're doing here is we're kind of doing a check if it's like a merge cell because that's where it gets a little tricky if you do have merged cells well you can't merge you could you could search for one cell but not the other if it's merge so we're kind of doing the check because if it is we don't want to ultimately we'll, we'll catch it um we'll catch the first cell not the the secondary one that's that's merged so that's kind of what this is for um and if it is we're just going to continue and then now we'll be able to do our actual search this is where our regular expression comes in and we would do a search we're going to search um, 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 um. So we're going to search for our text value. Okay. And then our cell value. Cause again, we have a text value that we want to search with and the text value is whatever we specified. Um, like we're trying to search for, uh, some sort of unique identifier. Maybe it's a phone number. So whatever that phone number is, that's our text value. Cause that's what we're looking for. And then of course we're we're getting the value from the cell again we're dealing with excel here so we're getting the value from an from a single cell that we just converted to a string so we could you know search it because if we don't do that it's it will still be an object and you know you can't search an object um so our flags that we're going to specify is going to be a regular expression ignore case which means we don't want to be case sensitive so if you're dealing with like a person's name like mary capital m lowercase letters after that and maybe the file has the name mary in it but it's all lowercase if you don't do this it's not going to find it so i would recommend you ignore case so like that you still get a match unless you have a reason where um you want it to be case sensitive and that's the case then yeah you're good uh let me close this get some more room oh damn you can't see let me move this up. There it goes. Forgot my face was blocking the view. Okay. So now that we have done that, we're going to do is not none. So what we do here, we're saying if against the if statement search, we're looking for a pattern search this text in this string value and make sure it's not case sensitive. That's what we're doing here. And if it does match, right, we have a match where this matches this we're going to get back um some sort of value some sort of match value and I probably we probably go go through it but um that it is match and in this case we're saying is not none cuz you know there's you know there there is some results being returned back um and if we get if we do get results that we that get returned back that's when we're going to do a results string. Um, let's do something like file name. Um, 
file name, which is again this up here on top. The, so what this is going to be, this is what we're going to add to the, we're going to append to our our results list up here. Right, so we're just kind of building that string together. That's all we're doing here. Um, the next thing that we probably want to add is something to separate it. Um, worksheet name, because again, we're doing with Excel. You want to, if you have a, a, an Excel file with 10 tabs, you want to know what tab it's coming from. So if you could, you want to dig in and, you know, do some research, you can and look at it. So for this, it's going to be worksheet object and it will be title. All right. Uh, the next thing is going to be, uh, I'm going to call this found at line number. So what line number was it found? Like what row was it found on? So in this case, I'll probably say found at row number. Um, and this would be string index plus one. And that's it, man. Oh yeah, the value. So I also want um, so see how it's pretty long and it's not ideal to have it long. So normally what I, what I should have done here is I'm going to separate it to a new line and you do that by having, um, a backslash. So now I kind of keep, you know, have it go to the next line. So that's what I'm doing here. Um, the next thing is going, oops, again, separate it out. Oops. And then the final thing, the final item that we want to add is going to be cell value. So we want to see what all is inside the cell. Like, let's say we're looking for, um, an address, um, or well, the address could have sweet something something so we want to print out the full cell value whatever that happens to be so in this case we would do string cell value that's it that would be our results right there so now that we have our results back what we're gonna do like we're pretty much build our results we're going to do a self um, underscore results append and we're going to append this string to this our results list that we have okay and this is all part of the search excel files right so we just kind of separated we created a method for that also remember how we get, we had that indicator that is found so if if it found if it finds it we're going to now switch the indicator to yes it's been found so now we got that um, all right. So now, so we got one message created. Now we're going to create another one. And this is one is going to be called search text files. All right. So same thing. We're passing in directory file pass and file name. Sl and same concept, right? So we're going to have to read the file, iterate through it, do a search, and then we find results, append it to our, our list. Uh, of course we're doing it slightly different because it's not Excel. This is a, a text file. So we're going to do with open. Um, and this would be our directory file pass. And we're going to do read just our own as only because it's not binary. You could do RB, but in this case, we know strictly text. So we're just going to do uh, R. So I'm going to call this text file. And then I'm going to do lines text file read lines, right? With the S at the end, right? 
so next what we're going to do we're going to do four index um line in lines there's some things that we may tweak to this uh, for example when you're dealing with very massive large files when i say large file that's you're dealing with a csv file that's probably you know 500 gigs right that's a good example uh, that's a good scenario where you wouldn't you really wouldn't want to read that file into memory and then scan through it uh, you want to do pieces at a time so we'll change that that is something i actually thought about right now but in order to continue with the with the with this um project we're going to do it in a way where it's going to read it put it in memory um and most in most cases it would that would be fine anyways it's only become the challenge when dealing with very large files that are just too big to live in memory so in this case it's fine but we'll tweak it and we'll we'll make some changes later to accommodate for that um oh yeah i forgot so what i need to do here is we're going to do the enumerate which again if you're not familiar with enumerate um let me kind of just hover over. So ultimately, this kind of gives the index. Think of it as a sequence. You get your normal your normal value back, but you also get a, a sequence um, to be able to know which which is which is my index um, value. So kind of like think of it as lets you know what row um, you're at as it iterates over. But you're doing it not because um, the file is telling you that hey it's row one that's not the case because as you're iterating over one by one each row uh, each new line better yet now row each new line we are kind of auto determining hey this is index zero one two three and so on so we we kind of self-determine what the the row number is um all right so now after we do that we're going to do our search right regular expression search same concept as of above um, our, we're going to specify our text value. Now, in this case, we're not going to specify a cell value. In this case, it would actually be line. It would be this here. And this will be like the full line, right? Again, Excel, we were, we're scanning through each cell. In this case, we're scanning through the whole line text. So it's, it will be line. Um, same thing, flags, ignore. And then it will be is not none. All right. And then from here, same thing, which it would be result string um, file name file name. Oops. Um, what else? File name. In this case, we're just dealing with file name. Uh, found at line number, right? Whatever line number it was found. Um, where in this case, it would be string index one hold on why did i put equals that's not right it should be plus again put my pipe let's a new line and then the final one would be um um row value because we're going to show the whole row whatever the whatever the row is of data right we're going to pretty much show that as well and this would be a uh, line and yeah, yep here it goes right here right so it's going to be line cool so now we're going to do call our results list we're going to append this text and then we need to set our value or is found again if we find it somewhere even if i knew once we want to identify it as it's found 
and that makes it easier. So whenever from a process, if before you even try to, well, let me try to iterate over the list to save to a file. You could just do a check. Did, did they even find anything, right? And if the answer is no, there's nothing to do. And the answer is yes, then you can determine what, what you want to do. Okay, so now that we have our two functions here, we have a search Excel files, search text files. Um, I'm going to create two more and these are going to be more to return values. So this one would be get results, um, list self, and it will be a return results. All right. The next one is going to be called is value found. And pretty much what we're doing here is we're, we're calling that is found object, right? So ultimately this will tell us, did it find it or not? Is it, did it find it? It will be yes. If not, it will be no. Pretty much what that's doing. So that's it. Now that we have that set up, the next thing that we're going to do is, um, let's see. So inside our initiate, um, I have my search search. So let's do another and we're going to call this execute. Okay. So inside this guy, which is called execute, this is where we're going to do our processing. We're going to run. There's a few things we're going to do. We're going to run, start scanning all, all the files. We're going to see how many files are in the folder. We're going to start, um, building the directory, like full pass of that file and folder pass. And then we're going to the check. Is it Excel? Is it a binary file? You know, is it a text file? Then we're going to do some actions after that. So that's kind of what we're doing here. Um, so let's do here would be for file in OS dot list directory. Um, and this would be self underscore directory pass. So list directory list direct. What this does is when you pass in a directory pass, not a folder directory pass, but just say a, like a folder pass, right? Only, um, if there happens to be files in that folder, this is going to tell you, um, pretty much what it does. It gave you, it gives you a list of those files. Um, all the files in the folder, you get back a list. And then that's why I have it in here in the for in a, for statement, because we're going to iterate over that list um, to do what we were trying to do, right? To search. So once I do that, next I'm going to build my um, my directory pass. So it'll be directory file pass equals uh, pure pass, and this would be self directory pass file. Right. Again, pure pass is the way to go guys, you know, to build your, your, your root slash file names, you know, together. Cause this easily will work on windows, Mac and Linux. You don't have any issues there. Um, okay. So next I'm going to do if OS pass dot is file. So directory path, we're going to, what we're doing here is, is it an, um, is it a file? So by that, so see how we have file, like we're iterating over this. We have a folder here that we're iterating over all the objects in the folder. Think about it that sometimes they could be subfolders in there. So if it's a subfolder, it's going to show up under file name, right? So this will be really, um, building a, um, your root directory pass and of course the subfolder name. So because of that, that's what we're doing to check is that, is that a file, because if it's not a file, if it happens to be a subfolder, then we don't want to do nothing with it. Right. We don't want to, there's nothing we could do because it's a subfolder. Um, so in that case, we're doing a check is it a file. And if it's true, then we go on, you know, go on to the next step, 
which in this case we would do we're going to do our check and this would be um check if file is excel okay that's pretty much what we're doing and the way we're going to do that we're going to do is uh, regular expression find all and then we're going to look for specific value which in this case is going to be xls um comma string file right so this is the pattern that we're looking for that's going to be in this file up here and then this um then i'm going to do or regular expression find all same same thing right same but this the this the um, the file that i'm looking for is the newer version of excel the xlsx i don't know why i my tongue i get tongue twisted for some reason i can't say it fast enough um and that's it man so assuming that any one of these are true and that's what we're doing here right we did if this and if it matches it comes returns true same thing with this if it matches it returns true so if it's true we go on to the next step so the next step is going to be we're going to call that excel that search excel files uh function that we created and then here we're going to end up specifying our directory pass and then we're going to specify um file okay we want to specify the file name as well so that's what we're going to be doing here and that's it that's all we do here and and again that's one of the reason why i created a function i like to separate my code so if i ever make updates it makes it a little bit more manageable a little bit more easier to do right so that's the whole part i could have put it all under here and it would have worked fine but i did like to kind of get it have it separate um okay so now that we uh we do check if it's an excel file um uh when when it's excel file um process with search excel file function all right um so the next thing that we're going to do here we're going to do uh is elf is is elf if else if statement i know um, in this case this is where we're using the other package right we haven't used it yet but if we have, if i go back up on top see how we have, we have this is binary so now we're going to use that we're going to use the is binary right and what we're doing here is we're going to determine um oh i need to make this a string as well yep because they're coming from pure pass um go ahead and apply the string function as well uh, it causes the issues if you don't so that that's why so what i'm doing here is, is binary it's going to now check my file is it a binary file or not so because if it's not so let's kind of check if file is um check if file is binary or not okay if not binary uh then continue so in this case i'm looking for um that it's false right i don't want it it's, so so the when i get back it's um true or false in my case i want it to be false because if it's true that that means binary i don't want to process the binary file if it's false i want to process it 
because that means it's a text file and it's not an Excel file because we already built logic here. Our first if, if, if else statement and looking for Excel already to begin with. So assuming that it's not binary and it's not Excel, then it leaves to be text. So that's kind of where this comes in. Um, we're going to end up calling our, our, uh, search text file, uh, function that we created. So again, we're going to pass in directory file pass and file, which is the file name pretty much. Uh, what else? So the next thing I'm going to just put notes on here, but this will be a to do, um, search for binary files like PDF, doc X, etc. So this is a more for to do, but ultimately add logic to be able to scan through and parse PDF files. Um, and that's kind of, that's more so to come later, right? Not now. Um, I think we have everything, man. Now that I look at it, um, we have our class text finder. We initiate, we're going to execute. So again, okay, so this has to run somewhere, right? This has to get executed somehow. Um, so let's see. Okay. So now I'm going to go towards the bottom. Let's do an if name equals uh, main. So this is when that, when, when we run this class, um, it'll just start and it'll kind of, you know, execute what we want. So in our case, I'm going to call this, um, it's called an object for now. And I'm going to call the text finder. Okay. So my root directory is going to be my root directory object, which is up here, right? This is going to be an argument that we're going to pass in. So I'll show you in a minute. Once we do run that, the second is going to be my, is going to be text value. Um, and this would be called text to find. So this is the value that we're trying to find pretty much text to find. Right. So we're going to, we're going to get this object back by us doing this. Nothing's happening, right? Just FYI. I just want to make like this. Let's go ahead and do it now. Right? So if I go, I'm already active. If I were to run this text finder. Oh yeah. I forgot. Got to specify my arguments. So here's the thing. I don't even have nothing. I need a. Let me do that right quick, man. So I'm in the project. Oops. Let me create another, um, I'm going to create a folder and I'm going to call this storage. So this is where we're going to have some, some files. We're going to put some files in here. So let me find some files now. Uh, let's see what I have that I could put in there. Just different type of files. Um, here's one. So I found a CSV file. Let's put that in there. CSV. I found another CSV. Um, I've got a JSON file. What else? Um, I have this Python file, like literally a PY file, put that in there. And do I have an Excel file anywhere? Um, here I got this other file again, just trying to put random files in here. Let me see. I should have at least one Excel, man. Let me try to find one Excel file at least. Oh uh, man, I guess I do not have an Excel file. Okay. Let me create an Excel file real quick. Uh, maybe I could find one with some data already. Let's create, boom. There you go. This one already has data. So I'm going to take this as is and let me save as browse, uh, 
code, YouTube, storage, boom. All right, cool. So now we have some data in there. So again, we got all kinds of different files, CSV, CSV, JSON, uh, Python, Excel, right? So all kinds of different files. Uh, let's open up the CSV file. We could try to pick something here to kind of search a uh, phone number. There you go. We got phone number. So that's something good to search. Uh, don't save. Um, all right, cool. So now what I'm going to do now, I'm going to pass in this directory pass. I'm going to call this, put in double quotes. And then I'm going to pass in my value. Um, you don't have to put in double quotes, but I just, I like to do it. All right. We didn't get nothing back, but again, if we look at our, look at our code, all we're doing, just running the, we're calling the class, we're initiating everything, but we're not doing nothing, right? There's nothing happening. Um, in order to have something happen, Let's go ahead and run our execute. All right. So now again, we're going to run. Nothing should happen again. Oh, uh, never mind. We got an error. So something did happen, but why did we get an error? There's something else. Um, line or this area line 52. Oh, my bad. It's supposed to be lines, not line. Yep. That's my mistake. All right, so let's try it again. Let me move this over here. Um, all right, cool. So this is a warning, but again, we're still good. It's not an error or nothing like that. So the warning cannot parse header or footer, so it will be ignored. Um, this would relate to the Excel file. So the Excel file probably has the footer and the header into it. So ultimately this is just saying that it cannot parse that. So that's fine for now. But again, it didn't error out, it just gave it a warning. But nothing happened though, right? When you look at it, nothing happened. Because all we did so far is we called this class, so we have an object. So ideally, once we built this project out, this this class would actually be kind of on its own, its own file. And then there will be another file that will be calling that class that will bring in that class to call it right to then again execute it and then ultimately after we execute it this is where i could do um is value found i'm going to call that function and this would tell me this this should tell me did it find it or not boom it gave me back a yes that means that it did find it. So now I want to know where did it find it, right? So if I, if I were to do a print, um, object, get results list, let me call that, that, um, function. Now, if I run it, you can see we, I got it. I get a list back, right? So, and it tells me all the details They came from customer april.csv found on line four row number and this is all the data that exists in that row and so again it found my value that i was looking for and th this is awesome that again this has been for me very beneficial there's stuff that you could do with a terminal and i have used it before but i wanted something more rich and I did that, but I wanted something that actually worked with Excel as well, old and new version Excel. Um, and that's where I kind of decided to build this script that I put together. So also just one thing to share this script that we, that, I, that I kind of have here. I don't, I'm, let me clean it up real quick. Cause I don't need that. But either way, this, um, this script that, that I kind of, that I'm walking you through. I, I built this a couple of year, years back. I actually found it. I was gonna, I was going through some projects and I found this and this, I built it, dude, probably like six years ago, man. It's been a while. Now the version that I built initially was not as, 
clean in my mind as this one. This is a lot cleaner. It could probably be cleaner than what it is, but it's a lot cleaner. You know, made it better. Because again, six years ago, I at least I think in a way that I'm a better um, developer now than what I was six years ago. So even though it worked and the, and the results were the same than what I'm getting here, um, it's it's better design in my mind. But again, you can see how how we call it. We're passing in our arguments when we run our call our file. So again, Python textfinder.py specify the folder that you're trying to search. Let's specify the value you're trying to search for. So let's say, for example, I'm trying to search for, um, let's say Mary, right? Somebody named Mary. Boom, we have a lot of people named Mary. As you can tell, there's a lot of results that I'm getting back. Now also keep in mind that I decided to just print the list, my results, my object. Since we know it's, it's a list that we're getting back, we could do a, um, I don't want to call it row in object. And then I'm going to print the row. So we could do it that way as well. So now when I run it, it's a lot cleaner little bit easier to see but now you could tell where it's, it found the name Mary it found it in this JSON file line 7 and then here's the results that I got back for that um, it found it in the Excel file right so there you go line 4 cell value loan summary um, Hold on, is that right? What the hell? So this is odd. I searched for Mary, right? But it said it found it on row four value loan summary. Is there a Mary in there? What the hell? Let's check it out. That's kind of odd. Line four. Um, I'm trying to make sure that it's not like any of these, these notes. So loan summary, but I'm looking at it. I don't see the word Mary. Oh, my bad. What am I talking about? The summary, the I'm stupid. That's where it got the word again. So it's finding the word Mary. It did fine again. It, it's, a, it's a wild card search. Keep that in mind. It's not doing a, a full search. It's a wild card search. And uh, and again, maybe we could add logic to be more specific on that. But nevertheless, it may not make sense. Mary, then you go at the end. Boom. But it finds all the files. And, and again, it found everything from CSV to JSON to Excel. Right. So this is a nice little script. Trust me, when you need it for stuff, it's fast too, man. It is fast. Um, very beneficial. I, I need to do testing a course on it on larger files. And I know on the larger file, that's where some logic would need to be added to, um, read chunks of it at a time and then log the results and then ultimately just iterate over the file. But again, that's to come. Hopefully this helps out. Hopefully it benefits some of y'all because trust me, I needed this at one point some years back came in handy. I actually needed it again a couple of days ago. And that's how I stumbled across my, um, this file and decided to, to fine tune it. And then of course use it for my use case. And then I just decided to share it with y'all, man. That's a lot of the stuff that I'm doing. I'm, I mean, um, I know, I know there are a lot of people that are content creators, so they try to find things to do, but they don't really have real, problems it's more like let's build a game or let's let's just build this you know um shopping cart or something like but they're just making up stuff like i'm trying to find like i'm trying to find like use not find but i'm using like real scenarios real reasons real like you know build these scripts or show projects of something real like stuff that i'm actually using 
in my in my business and you know for my use cases and ultimately hopefully one of y'all may have a use case but either way guys hopefully this helps you out if you need it keep in mind this is a multi-part series so this is part one of probably like four or five parts eventually we're going to take this code we're going to use it on the back end and we're going to create a desktop app where we could we'll have a ui we're going to pass in um our value we're going to like instead of passing it through an argument we're going to pass it through the ui we're going to build all of that we're going to walk through that process it's been a while since i built a desktop app so i'm going to have to kind of get a slight refresher but it's fine uh, we'll do it together we'll build it and then we'll start expanding on this as well we'll start adding other features to it like to be able to search pdf files right things of that nature so either way guys hopefully you like it again give me a like give me a thumbs up give me a follow guys and peace